Well, I'm going to intro a little bit, if you guys don't know. Um, Manny is someone who actually had a big influence on my career coming into, into the skate world. Um, recognize a lot of things that I didn't really recognize in myself. I would say like a week ago, I was like, I had this epiphany. I was like, man, what if I do a podcast? But then I was like, I don't know. It's like, do I not do it? Do I do it? And then I'm always like hearing you just like do what yeah. makes you happy. And I'm just like, I'm just going to start this thing. So I figured like, why not have him as my first guest? Someone who's put me into the skate world, you know, you know, seeing me come from being a little kid to now. I mean, if anybody's going to have a podcast or if anybody's going to have something on YouTube, I mean, it might as well be you since that's how, that that's how you came up. That's how I met you, and your charisma always showed that. So that's why I always tell you, like, never be scared to be yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna surround yourself with people who love you and love your energy, and are very gutsy enough to FaceTime people. And you're you're notorious for that. You yes, know, I not am. not scared to just be like, oh, I'm gonna FaceTime Little Wayne, and then people are like, bro, you stop. And then it's like, what's up, Spanish? And you're like. What's up, Wayne? Everybody's tripping us because your confidence and your belief in yourself and, and who you are goes far beyond what people see in themselves. It's true. And in this generation, I feel like everyone's so insecure with what they want to post or how do I post it or what are people going to say? It's like, do what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean yeah, we've, we've, always, we've, always, we've always talked about that. It's like, if we think it's cool and we like it and it's our work or it's how we have fun... At the end of the day, you're re- you're releasing that energy of doing what you love, and then people gravitate towards that because they want to do that, but they're scared to do it. Yeah. But what really matters is that you're doing what makes you happy. It's your life to do what you want, and people need to understand that. Like, we've been in in this game for so long, and we've seen people come and go. People that think they're sick, the cool guys, the guys yeah. that are like you know over animated yeah, but at the yeah, end yeah. of the day the people that stuck to who who they truly are they never went anywhere because they had nothing to prove they were themselves they don't like people can't identify who they really are if you ask somebody like if you came up to them like do you know who you are they'd be like what the question it's like it's like the funny where are you going to be in five year question you know that question runs through my head a lot but what the funny thing is like that question is a trick question I, I, I personally feel it's a trick question because like you don't really know where you're going to be in five years. You don't know where you're going to be in five seconds. Yeah, no, that's a big fact. I mean, at the end of the day, too, it's like you get inspired every day. Mm-hmm. So that's why your road is never ending in capabilities of what you can do. And people don't see that either. It's like I most people don't know this, but, you know, I went to tech school, graduated welding. I build um, a majority of the stuff here. Like this table I build, the skate park I build with Mike Rokey. Like, I never knew that me loving to build would allow me to build my own skate park. Yeah. You know, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you got to you gotta see bigger than, than just in front of you. In the same breath, you can't say, in five years, I'm going to be doing this because then you're limiting the possibilities of things that can happen. You can have like a guideline, like, in five years, I want to be a pro skater, Right. But in the same breath, don't just only focus on being a pro skater. Let that evolve because if you don't enjoy the journey to being a pro skater, when you become a pro skater, you're not you're not gonna enjoy that moment. Because if you fast forward, you're like it's it's all the things that you've gone through, all the fights, all the arguments, all the battles, all the self beliefs, all the people hating, the people loving, right? All those emotions that last that whole journey. That the day that someone gives you a board, most people cry because it's something that they fought for. So you can't limit your mind either because you have to remember that the, the journey will always open different doors, you know? Yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, I feel like, do you remember when that happened for you, like skateboarding and like that point when you got your board and you learned those tricks? Like, that's all you care. Like, do you remember those days at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I think about all that stuff all the time. I, I don't forget anything. One of my biggest things... Um, was I love to impress the people I admired, the people that mattered to me, that opinions mattered, right? So when we were st- we would come and stay with Felix during mm-hmm. the famous days, mm-hmm. um, you know, we'd go to the barracks and I'd try a trick and he'd be like, well, I can't believe you did that. And then my goal is so when I went home is to learn a new trick at Hadley on the cut rail so then that I can go, when I came back to the barracks, I'd be like, oh, Felix, check this out. And it's like a whole new trick. And then seeing him get excited over a goal I set to get him hyped and push myself was worth 
all the mental battles I had, Lee, or wh- wherever I was learning it. And you know that that in itself is like part of the part of that journey. And it's funny too because people don't know, but like that was my turning point was you calling me and telling me come out here like yeah. like stay with Felix and then being there and then like seeing all the stuff how it really went down I was like yo like I'm really here like this guy yeah. gave me the keys to his cars gave me the keys to his house like and it's funny because you pay it forward in some way it comes back to you and now I'm doing the same thing he did for me without even naturally knowing I just naturally just did it yeah I mean we you got to think we Felix was one of the one of the coolest people, I mean, one of the dopest people in, in my journey thus far. And, you know, he he was more than a big brother. He was a mentor. He was like a father figure to us. And yeah, he loved us unconditionally. And he, he treated us like if we were him. So we're going to do that for people, you know, naturally, because we're like, wow, this is the way that it got done for us. And it felt awesome that someone loved us like that. Then subconsciously, you're going to pay that forward to the next group of kids that come in your life. And then people are going to be staying in your house when you're not in town. And people are going to be borrowing your car. Like, Yo-Yo took your car today to go to the dentist. Yeah, of course. Right? It's, so yeah, it's, it's like... It's, it's wild. It's wild. It really is. It's crazy how how much life really does a full circle without even noticing you're doing it. And I, I feel like it's so many things. I could sit here and talk to you for hours and hours. And I feel like the point of me being here right now is just to have a conversation and really like let all you guys know a little bit more about where I came from and how I came up and how the journey was. And like, like me and this man pretty much wanted to ch- like kill each other, but hey, then but realized, that- but, but, but let me stop you. But down the road, knowing those things that we had to lead up to it, it actually made me a better person. I thought about this the other day. I think I said it to somebody, I don't know what conversation it was like, but I feel like if me and Manny never had that, like, miscommunication or altercation or whatever it was. If we like, never had that turning point. That turning point, exactly. Yes. You know, they saw us. We were tied at the hip everywhere. Every mm-hmm. concert we went to, street skating, everywhere we went. It was me, you, Felix, Javi, Johnny, Diego, right? But it was always me and you from the jump. Always yep. me and you. Yep. And, you know, sadly, we had to go through that. That It was the only fight we've ever had in our whole friendship. It was our only fight we've ever had that like actually was a like a like a argument where mm-hmm. we both were said things that we didn't mean but we were it was our egos and us like wanting to be right and trying to prove a point but the way I saw it because instantly when when we had that altercation that wasn't physical it was more verbal yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't nothing Don't bad get it twisted. yeah 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 it you know a week after you left I was so bummed I was depressed I was like telling people like man i really i think i messed up like i don't i don't want to lose my friend i don't want to lose mike but someone someone told me this they were like you need to let him go so that he can figure life life out on his own because you know me i was always like because someone did felix did it for us i want to do it for you so whenever you were like oh man like oh this camera or this tripod or this computer or this program or this mm-hmm. trip or this flight i was like mike don't worry got it swipe mike don't worry got it swipe mike mm-hmm. don't worry about it. oh don't the rent i'm like mike don't worry about it don't worry about it don't worry about it i always want to take care of you because you're my brother and then that's what you do for, for the people that you love you want to help them as much as you can yeah but i realized i had to let you go so that you can become your own boss you can do your own things and then I feel like when we came back around, it made us better friends because now we're, we're, we appreciate the time we spend together and we have stuff to talk about versus us being like a chip on our shoulder where it was like, oh, whatever the argument was, like it didn't carry over. Like it didn't carry over into us now. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people probably go through that in life and don't know how to really accept those things and come back to it. Like, you know, it's like in relationships and it's in, it's in, in anything, friendships. It's just like you have to know how to, to fight to get back together. Mm-hmm. It's like, I never look at, at, a, at a loss not being a lesson. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, you take L's. It's like, really, it's just a lesson. I mean, you take L, you take a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. That's a fact. <laughs> no, so I just, it, it, it had to happen and, I, and I'm glad it did. And then now, almost 10 years, but that happened, you know, five years, but all together collectively, me almost being here now, 10 years, thinking about everything that I've done, I'm like, damn, like, I was in the car with Scales before I came here, and I told him, I was like, yo, I remember being in the car with Paul, dropping me off, and I would be like, man, I just want to be able to be on my own, and all this stuff, and, and those moments with Felix, and he's like, Mike, 
one day you're gonna be like, damn, I miss those days. And literally in a snap of my fingers, there's times where I'm like, I miss those days. Yeah. Like dude. going back to the crib, everyone's like, what do we do today? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Like I just love, I've always had that like people always around and that energy and always like vibing off one another because I feel like people need that. You can't really go around by yourself. Like I don't even go to the movies by myself. It feels yeah. weird to go to the movies by myself. I've, I've never done it. I'm I've, like, I've done it. It's pretty, pretty sad. But it's, it's probably, <laughs> I'm just saying, you I've got ex- is- yeah, you, you get excited <laughs> to go to the movies, but I'm saying go to by yourself, like, or even go eat by yourself. Sometimes I got to call people just while I'm eating. Yeah. Like, yo, what you doing? Just yeah. because of the initial fact of like us as humans, we need to be surrounded by other people. Yeah. Like no matter what it is. Yeah. It's the energy, the energy you swap with people. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, trust me, don't get me wrong. I have the life I've dreamed of since I was a kid. You know, I got my own house, I got my businesses, I got my skate park, I got my career, I travel the world. But there's never there's never a time where I'm like, man, do I miss that blue couch? Or right? man, do I miss the ammo van? Or man, do I miss the conversations with Felix? Or man, do I miss us in the van, like five deep in the back and Felix driving? Like, that was one of the best times of my life because we were able to be kids as grown-ups, but it was like we were living in a movie. It's just one big old time of fun. <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. I'm, just, I'm lost for words. Because I, I, I feel like that, man. There's times where I'm just like, damn, like, I wish I never stopped recording. And that's one thing, like, I'll quote Felix on this. I know we keep bringing Felix up. And, like, Felix always told me this, and I'll, I'm always says anytime I'm with anybody who is recording, if you turn your camera off, you're not making money. It's a fact. And it's true. He doesn't physically mean money. He means these moments. And that's what I always go by is capturing the moment. I feel like when you when you stop recording, you miss those prime, those just like epic moments. And even if it's not just a trick, it's just B-roll, whatever. But it's just that, or that split second of someone saying something funny. And it's, you yeah. cherish those moments. And I wish I kept recording episodes when I was at his house and I did more. But yeah. I was so focused on figuring out my craft and getting better as a yeah. filmer than I was trying to be this like goofball so-called now you do you know yeah. vloggers but I was just doing what I was doing Spanish Mike TV my episodes just filming everything yeah. in the day I wish I did more but sometimes you're destined for certain things mm-hmm. to certain yeah. things turn out the way they are and yeah. look where we're at now so it's like I can't be mad at not recording but like yeah. those moments I'll have for myself in my memory bank what's cool is that doing that taught you to do this so it True. did it did come back full circle you're doing a video talking to a camera hanging out with your friends so it's true realistically telling like, stories yeah you're telling stories it's just a different form of doing it and you know it's 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 missed it's needed P- people need to know the stories they need it they need to understand like how things happen you know, like because you people see me or see other people already. Like you made it, you made it, you have it. But really, to know the the journey or what it took to get there, and it, like I remember seeing this thing on the internet the other day. It's funny, the internet, Instagram, internet, whatever. <laughs> seen the other day, Ice Cube saying something about like everybody just wants to get there. They want to get there, but they never want to have a journey. The journey is the beautiful thing. The struggles, the sleeping on the floors, like being on action tours with you and like not having a bed and then knowing when I went on tour with Primitive and now Diamond and then being like, do I have a bed? And I always have a bed, but I'm just yeah. so used to like, oh, get ready to sleep on the floor, do all yeah. this like, yeah. but those moments are the ones where you're like, damn, do it make you appreciate when you do get the bed in the yeah. room. Or when you get AC. AC for sure. This guy does not like AC. Right now I'm cool. I'm keeping it cool. I was going to have him turn the AC on, but I'm... Um, the sweat is staying yeah, in the hat. So. Yeah. Now when you go to Puerto Rico, you can stay at a hotel. hotel has AC. Yeah. When, or, you, when you stayed last time, you didn't have AC. Yeah, we slept outside. We yeah, slept outside. It, it was, was nice, though. nature. Until I was like, we need a hotel. Yeah. And then we got the hotel out of the street. Oh, and there was that cockroach on your back. Yeah, that was wild. Yeah, things happen, though. It it's was cool. Good. It's an experience. Moments. Life, life it teaches you a lot of experiences. And I feel like you know, hanging out with you, I've learned a lot. So it's like cool to know that. And I, and I want them to know, too, like... Where was that that moment that you had that you knew that skateboarding was gonna be like it? I always knew. You always knew. I since I between like you and Dave coming up and you seeing I, Dave and it's like the thing is like when I first so when I first started skating I did it for the fear fact that I saw people skating and they were having fun. I asked them let me try it. They let me try it. I was hooked. 
when I started skating, I was present in the moment. I wasn't thinking about school. I wasn't thinking about girl problems. I wasn't thinking about nothing. I was thinking about how can you do tricks on this board? This thing is so hard to use and I'm very fast at picking things up and I couldn't. So after that, and then watching, you know, my first skate videos, I was like, you know, I started to do the daydream thing. Like, oh, imagine if I was a pro skater. Imagine, like, if I left Lowell Mass. Like, imagine, like, you know, I just did the imagine. I did the Louis Tolentino. Imagine, imagine, imagine. No, it's true. But those imagine questions became, like, me manifesting without realizing. Me going like, man, you know what? Like, I can do this. And I want to do this. And I will do this. And, like... Lowell doesn't define who I am, and I'm a product of my imagination. I'm not a product of my environment. I want, I want to travel the world, and I want to do this. Everything I have, I've said. And at, at that time, like, I always knew that I, I was going to do whatever it took to get to where I'm going, because I'm not even there yet. I'm still, on my, I'm still on my journey. People don't realize that. They see us pros, and they see us that have been in the game for a while, and they think that, like, okay, you did it. There's more to this. There's more. Like, I haven't even peaked yet. I'm still learning tricks. I'm still filming stuff. Uh -huh. You know, we're like, we got the Olympics around the corner. Like, but I always had that self-belief inside that, like, I'm going to make it happen. And then I had someone like Dave Bachinski. Come on now. Like, that, that, that. It, he seemed didn't... like he was born. Yeah. To, he was already born with tricks. Like, that guy yeah. came out of the womb yeah. already jumping on mini ramps and, yeah. and doing, um, you know, Everything. jumping when, down 20 bro, stairs. When I first started skating, Dave was already doing, like, front side flips, like, four stairs. Like, Back then, like Dave was doing Smith kickflips on boxes and stuff. Like, Dave's always been so good. I mean, he's way better now, obviously, but he was my motivation. Like, I used to skate contests with Dave, and I'd be like, "Man, okay, so I'm gonna I'm skating for second. Until I realized, like, wait, like I just beat Dave, and then it was like I didn't even think about it like that no more. I was like, "Bro, I could do this. This is crazy. Like, we're out filming, we're traveling, and we're kids, you know. And his his Buick LeSable just." Going from state to state, Beast of the East contest, filming in New York, filming in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, like just filming and going and doing, and people don't know that, you know. It's not like now where you can live in your hometown and be on Instagram and be a Instagram star or have a bunch of followers. Like, um, uh, not that he's good at skating; he just posted a pretty sick clip, hard flip back nose blunt. Uh, Nick Boltz Holtz. Yeah, he's from Texas, I think. He's from Texas, but right, but he yeah. doesn't. He. He's able to create a following on Instagram just from his own little skate park. It's right? True. We didn't have that. We had to hit the road. We had to go to Hollywood 12. We had to go to El Toro. Mm -hmm. You know? And that was, but that was the journey, the beautiful journey that I feel like this new generation is missing out on. But I feel like they know and they want to do that. But I feel like Instagram is what, that's their avenue to be seen. But I feel like they want to get out too. They want to be like, I want to be recognized. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Yeah. I mean, it's a big look at me, you know, market now. But yeah, that's the way the world is now. Even before I met Felix, I was already on that road. I was in for shorties. I was like DC. Uh -huh. I was not on DC, but I had a contract. I was doing stuff. Like, it, and then Felix helped catapult, put me in the right places, around the right people. And then when I won the crossroads where I'd be like, Chris Cole and Nigel and Sheckler and Tori and I won the best trick as an am skating against the like the biggest pros at the time that was my turning point to knowing that I'm ready to hang with the big dogs yeah yeah, yeah. that was definitely a crazy contest I don't think anyone would even expect you to you just came in and I know I remember that being like what yeah. Watching it too, I was like, that was I did, the first one. I did like one. thirty tricks. That was the first one, I think. Over the was it over the rail? It was, no, it was the two hubbas with the fence at the bottom. I did Nolly Hill backsmith with That's the right. fence at the bottom. That's crazy. I remember that. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, I still dude. got that though. So, hey, what was the last time you did that? Yeah. For my uh, uh, battle commander, the barracks. Yeah, but I'm talking about really like how. Yeah, yeah. When's the last time you really, really done it? Yeah, I mean that that was it. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. Since then, I need a, I need a film one. But you gotta realize, man, generations like gone, seen today, gone tomorrow. No so big like, facts. But that's why I stay active, and that's why I skate the way I skate. That's another thing. Yeah. Two people always like. You see, you know how I skate. I've always skated like that. People think you're doing it to show off, but really you're just. Skating. That's how I skate. I've always skated like that. Yeah, it's. I wish I could say the same. Skating is <laughs> not like that. I do a kickflip and everyone goes wild. No, no, no. I'm teasing. You know? I'm teasing. What? But, yeah, that's. It's true though. I mean, yeah, and then like you said, get got out of your environment and you know move forward towards that. And I feel like, I mean, you've had a lot of 
ups and downs and mm-hmm. wins and losses. And I feel like yeah. it's a good. I'm like stuck right now. It's like it's a no. It's a it's a it's a bittersweet. That's what it is. It's like when I destroyed my ankle, I had to get double ankle surgery. I, yeah. That's a big loss, but it was a big lesson to take care of my body when I came back to skating. It's true. So it is. It's it, if if you let your defeats and your losses bring you down, then you're not learning anything, and uh-huh. no one's gonna win. At everything. Even Floyd, retired undefeated, right? He's never hit the canvas, right? When he fought Zab Judah, he got caught. I think it was right hook. He stumbled back. His glove hit the canvas. That was technically a knockdown, but they never showed it. But guess what? No one knows that he lost at the Olympics. He got bronze medal. And he got Floyd? cheated. Yeah, he got cheated. He should have won, but he ended up with a bronze medal. So it's like, you don't always win at everything, but that him losing at the Olympics... Um, or I think it was national. It was something that he that they screwed him. But I think it was the Olympics. I want to say it was the Olympics. He from that realized like, wow, like I can't let this happen. Wow. You know, it's that lesson you learn like that, and then you you create this like, okay, like I learned my lesson now. How can I get better at it every time? You know, it's. I love it. I love seeing like people get mad at people winning and winning, but it's like I feel like hey, if he's gonna keep winning. Yeah. He's doing it right. He's, Let him win. Yeah, if if someone deserves it, this is the way I see it. A majority of the time, every single time Nigel wins, he deserves it. He doesn't True. get no brownie points. Ah. He he, even when he got on Nike, that didn't help him. Like he had to still work as hard, and ah. that's why I admire him as a skater and as a competitive skater and someone who pushes the limits of skateboarding because of that. Because he continues to do it, bro. I commend him for that. Well, it makes me happy. Yeah, that, that and it's is. crazy. I remember going to the barracks and watching his Rise to Shine part, and I was like, what? Where's this guy been? And I remember everybody in the room just going crazy because that part was seriously insane. And I remember at the time, like, being in L.A. and hanging out with everybody and Nathan, who was filming him, and he was just, like, showing me stuff, and I'm like, yo, yeah. Nigel's just crazy, bro. But the Nolly Crook, the double set rail where he gets sacked and then yeah. gets up and does it? like yeah, nobody... And it's funny, like, dude, that dude deserves a lot of credit. Like, he, and it's funny, I don't even know if he knows what he's done. I think he's just skating. Yeah, at this point. He's just having fun. At this point, yeah. At this point, yeah. He's, that's where he's at. Not like I laugh, but like, you know, sometimes you have conversations with your friends and you're like, I wonder if he like goes to the skate park that's like compared to street league courses because they're a lot bigger, you know, certain things and just laughs or like, damn, I've never fallen today. Like. I'm out here trying to just board slide, and I'm falling every time. My back, all this stuff. Yeah. This guy's doing 50 tricks nah, and not falling. Like, nah, he's he's that good. He's that good. Nigel, what are you doing? Yeah, the journey. Another another crazy story too is Derek Rose. Not a lot of people know his story. He has a documentary called Poo, P like like Winnie the Pooh, but Poo. Mm-hmm. Um, nah, it's it's so touching. No one no one knows what he went through. His I can relate to his story, you know. And it's crazy. He went from like rookie of the... He won two state championships for back-to-back for his college team. Then went rookie of the year in the NBA. Then I think the next year, the year or the year after, got league MVP, signed this insane Adidas contract, and then tore his ACL. Then oh came back, tore, tore that one or the other one. And then he had like a four-year span. And he's from Chicago. So he played for the Bulls, and people went from loving him and praising him to just like putting him down, and like putting him down, and like he, you could tell he was bouncing from team to team, and he was just wasn't happy, and that's the perception that people don't understand, which happens to skaters too. Like all these people, like quick to forget, they're like, oh, he's done. Who's the next guy? Who's the next kickflip crook guy? And it's like, it's bro, crazy. you don't understand. Blood, sweat, yeah. and tears. These are years, and now he's on the Pistons, and he's killing it. Yeah. Killing it. They're talking like all star again. Like this man is like a beast. But it all comes down to inner happiness. He found inner happiness within himself, mm-hmm. his wife, and his kid. And that gave him hope and it gave him it seemed I don't know him personally. Yeah. I mean if you do watch this, hit me up because you're dope. But um that happens with skaters too. Like how many people get surgery and then people are like, Oh, he's done or sponsors wanna drop them or whatever maybe or even fans like, Bro, you ain't got it no more. It's like you don't even understand. You weren't with me skating at the park. That's you true. weren't with you me filming with me. in the streets. You weren't. You weren't. And, and and people tend to forget those moments that 
you guys have to go through as skaters and it's like and and it's the best thing i always say to somebody because like i'll talk i'll just not say i talk shit but i'll just be like i'll be like say something like yeah do this but i'm like hold on, hold on. i try to roll up to the spot i'm like why am i even questioning this skater to try something or as you know as a filmmaker was going to push the skater but i'm like you know what if you don't want to try it, dude don't even try it because you know what i can't do that why am i telling you how to do what you do doesn't make sense I need to know what I need to do. That's to make sure this shit gets filmed. Yeah, that's it. But what's cool is like something that you always, that people don't understand either that that you did is like you would you would you would throw tricks out there, like hey, why don't you you know front jump board this rail or barrel heel board this rail or you know and that's cool because yeah. people don't understand that sometimes a skater, and within filming and video parts and what people need from them, they get lost and. A relationship between a skater and a filmer is so important. It's as vital as a relationship between you and the girl that you're going to think you're going to spend the rest of your life with. It's true. Because they control your emotions. It's true. You know, a filmer can be like, yo, it looks so tight. And you give it your all next try. You know, or you get to a spot and the filmer's like on his phone. And he's like kind of like, oh, this spot's whack. And you're like, in your head, you went there with a, with, with a trick in mind. And then now all of a sudden, this person's like diminishing the idea of something you thought was cool because they're being lazy or they just don't care yeah you just forget and and it's crazy because on this topic it's like i've been skating with johnny a lot i didn't have a that moment with him in a long time and i was going to talk about this too but like filming for the diamonds in the rough video that just happened off top of just having fun again with the vx at diamond park filming these edits and then realizing I was in the streets filming with the VX. Then I'm realizing I'm having all this footage and then I'm realizing like I've been skating a lot with Johnny because now I'm working at Diamond and yep. you know it was different because I was working at Primitive and the different like you know you work at one company and you gotta you stay focused with a lot of people. It's hard to have the time to go skate with your friends still and then realize I'm back with him and I'm like yo let's get busy and then his his style is developing his tricks are getting good and i'm He's like so good and now. consistency is is phenomenal and just watching him skate yeah. and just like dude you couldn't even switch flip you know you were crying doing a no slide shove it like to me like almost 7 years ago he was ago. scared of you remember he cried scared of front board the rail like, now and when he wanted a 50 50 the little hubba Remember he did fifty fifty and we we're like, oh, you got five zero. He's like nine years old, and then now he's doing the pressure flip, and yeah, switch flip and all that and yeah. into it. Like, no, he's like, but he, he's someone that I've seen that like if you can give like uh uh like most improved skater award to someone, like I knew that Johnny was always gonna be good. He had it in him. He had the tricks. He's from LA. He he had it, mm -hmm. but to the level of where he took it and he's taking it now blows my mind oh insane like it's like diego blows my mind it's like it's like playing a video game with him I'm like Yo, you think you can try this that plus 10 more tricks in the same day you're just like what you're like yeah. yo chill like we just needed this yeah. and it's crazy because i love watching and skating with him it's like it's different and he's funny and it's like damn it's little johnny to me but like and i was going through my phone the other day i like got in this moment it's like it's weird when you have these moments when you're by yourself, you're listening to music or you're flying or whatever, you go through your phone, you see all the pictures and it's going through my like, um, just my Instagram, like going through the feed yeah. and I'm seeing stuff and I'm reposting to my story and people are probably like, why is this guy posting so much on his story? But I was like, these are moments that I remember posting and like mm -hmm. Johnny was little and everybody, I'm just like, what? Yeah. It just goes by so fast. And the reason why I'm here and talking to you is just more about like cherishing those moments and, and living and reliving yeah. those moments and having a chance to talk to you. And like you said, go back 20 years from now, we can be like, relate to this conversation or show yeah. my kids this or, you know, vice versa. And it's like, man, it's, 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 it's a blessing to be able to, to just talk about skateboarding and just yeah. be hanging out. Just to have stories, yeah, relatable just, stories yeah. is, is cool. Cause there's a Spanish mic out there. There's a Mason sure. tag out there that are friends that are like, whoa, they're kind of like us and they did it. Mm -hmm. That inspires them. And it's like, people need to understand that like, if you surround yourself around people that believe in the same things that you believe in and have the right attitude, you guys can accomplish and achieve whatever it is you want. Bro, it's so true. And it, I want to say this, not I'm trying to cut you off, whatever, anything, but like, if you 
really believe it, it will happen. I'm going back to what you were saying earlier today about imagine, imagine all this stuff. I was always saying that when you used to text me. I was like, imagine this guy says you want to move to California. Imagine, imagine. One day you're like, yo, you want to move? I literally quit my job. I didn't even quit my job. I literally just left. I worked at the supermarket working produce at freaking Wallbounds. That thing went turned to shop right. Shout out Wallbounds. And, you know... I, I know about produce. Yeah. Uh, and I literally just left. I took whatever money I had in my savings and I just yeah. left. You know, I, I remember that. That was that was cool. That's when we built our little our little crew. And everybody knew in LA. If they saw the ammo van, if they saw me, if they saw you, I was there. Yep. Was there. Where you at? Oh, yeah, yeah, where's where's Spanish? It was sick. It was it was yeah. it was different. It was a time where it was like, Wow, I'm really in here. And I was from the outside in for a while watching the videos through the barracks and watching you guys post and then just being like boom i'm here yeah like what and, and that's it's true at, like yeah and at that point too we it goes back to what we were talking about too like not being scared to do what you want to do we were doing stuff that people at first weren't okay with but we didn't care all the youtube stuff all you know the five on flats the oh that tips. was that was that was ahead of its time yeah we were on the forefront of what people do now yeah and it's crazy to me because <laughs> 2008 because like, Paul had skate site to me and I the barracks came out and I and I looked at those sites like oh dude like we could do the same thing with your website like you have a good name like we just do all this create all these ideas let's just put it out and see what happens and then it started like clicking and I was like. Yo, I'm linking up with this dude, linking up with this dude. I'm hanging out with this dude. And next thing you know, like, I know all these people from that. And, like, years later, I'm still calling them and talking to them now because yeah. of those segments and stuff. Like yeah, the relationships. and But we always stuck to, we didn't care what people thought. We just did it. We did it. And then we were used as an example by people like the Barracks who has, at the time, you know, they had a huge staff. And it was just you and I. Yeah. You know, remember Steve? Like, Steve yeah. hit me up. Steve was like, "Yo, man, you got something going on." I remember he was like, "I remember talking about it." Like he wanted to bring Spanish Mike TV in a certain way there, and I was like, "Cool, we can figure something out." We never took the meeting, Steve. It's all good. Yeah. Maybe we can sit down. You can get maybe interviewed. this pod, you know, Spanish Mike TV. Podcast Who knows? I'm know. just. This is not a turning I'm, point. I'm, could I'm, be part of. I'm the not best. trying to turn this into anything except hanging out with my friends and sharing moments with them and having fun with it yeah. and i'm not trying to like yeah i think it's cool because the what what what's cool about this is that you're sharing moments with the people you're not just like hey i want to interview this guy but we have nothing to talk about i'm gonna ask him about his life it's like we're talking about stuff that we went through yeah you know like in the future when people create like um transmitters for dogs to talk you can interview nima and then she could talk about how she tried to bite your face off when you got here. Yes, 10 minutes before, <laughs> yeah. way before this, I, I missed my dog because she's back home at my parents' house. And I went to go pet Manny's dog, not realizing that you shouldn't put your face close to a dog. So what she did was, was just, eh. it wasn't like she nibbled. She just kind of gave me a little like, and I was like, whoa. I was like, it's not my dog. What am I doing? I was just so happy to see your dog. But at the same time, I was thinking back about she's my dog. Tired. But... I'm starting. To, you know, when in the up. middle of, in the middle of an interview, you know it's starting to get bad. Is when you start losing circulation to your legs. But if that's just being at the age of 29. Oh come on! I'm 34. No, and I'm no, still no. Nolly I'm, for I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm just. I'm just. Which I got a part dropping. We filmed some clips for it. Well, let's talk about. You it. You know, that's funny. Nothing makes me happier when you have the time that I hit you up to go film, to get a clip. We like can, that gets me. I'm just saying. Okay. That gets me so hyped when you, I'm like, yo, Mike, you want to go to this spot? And I know you have other projects, but when you say, yeah, I'm like, I have to get a clip. But that's the relationship we built, right? So it's like, yeah, I'm, yeah but I mean, I'm that's drop. what it is. That's what it is with the part. filmer and skater, you know? That's good. When is the part coming out? Well, do you have a, give right yourself now, a deadline? No, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I, I was the king of deadlines. Yeah, you I'm, were I'm done with that. I got deadlines tatted on me. I'm good with that. Yeah. Um... I want to finish it before the Olympics, though, just because I want it. I want that pressure off, and I want to put something out. It's I haven't put nothing out since I heard my since I got my surgery. When is the Olympics happening? Uh, July. I believe July. That's yeah. gonna be dope. And right now, I leave tomorrow to Puerto Rico. So I go to PR. I'm there for a month, so I'm gonna try to get some clips with Gustavo, um, New West Films building, um, who you got him so hyped, and that's why he does what he does. But how? 
from being Spanish Mike. Really? Yeah. So it's, you know, so I'm going to go film with him and then try to get some stuff. And then I have a little time in January to film. But then the first contest starts in February. And then there's 10 contests from February to May before the Olympics. 10? 10, bro. Is it SLS contest? Uh, SLS and World Skate. And then there, this is the first time ever that I, I think it's ever happened. But there's like almost two months where, or at least like five weeks, where there's a contest in a different country, back to back weekend. Like so, you get there like say on Tuesday, practice, mm-hmm. practice, practice, contest Saturday, Sunday. M- you fly out Monday, to the next country. Practice starts on Tuesday. It sounds sick. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I'll, not not a lot of people were excited about that. Um, but I was for the simple fact that it's like kind of crazy, but it should be cool. It's like we're, we're actually doing a world tour. That's, world tour contest. Yeah. And leading up to the Olympics, which is like, man, the first ever skateboarder Olympics. Like that's crazy. Yeah. I got to figure out, I got to, I got to get there. I'm going, I'm going. Hey, the Olympics, <laughs> I'm on my way. I need to be there. I need to. I need to support my friends. I need to yeah. just go to say like, yo, I, I'm at the Olymp- I'm at the Olympics. Like to me, I think it's sick. I think people are gonna hate on it regardless. But that's 50-50 and everything in this world. There's never gonna be someone who likes one thing. There's gonna they're gonna be dislikes and likes. That's why they're dislikes. The, same, and the likes. same people that hate the idea of what's happening with the Olympics are the same people that hate on some street skaters. Or you also, know what I mean? It's like it does like, yeah. Does it at the end of the day? It's like. I understand all sides of it. For me, my my reasoning to getting excited to do it is because I get to represent my country. And bigger than that, I get to represent every Latin skater, male or female, that has a dream. Mm-hmm. I, lo- I love to skateboard. Mm-hmm. Skateboarding is my therapy. Yep. I'm getting older in age, so I'm vegan consciously because of animals the planet but also for my body and i work out so i can keep my body strong so i can skate and do what i love every day because it's my therapy facts so it's like hate on me all you want bro but at 35 at 34 years old i want to see you do what i'm doing you know like then then i'll be like okay you want your pissed drunk dude druggy whatever that you we, we eat what you want and you're doing it well, you know, kudos, but not me. I don't want to do that. I want to be as healthy as I can mentally and physically so that I can do what I love. It's my life, my choices, not yours. You feel me? They're mine. I don't know how long I could be sitting on this floor, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weigh out the options with you because I'm going to... No, I think, I, I think this was the first good episode and I know we'll do another one. Down the so road. Why, why are you trying to shut me down? I was just saying I was just trying to readjust myself. But if I, you want to end this episode, no, I just think off, I just, off a high note, off of being healthy, yeah, mentally, physically, prepared. also physically, yeah, mentally, physically. it's important. And I think the biggest message in this is do what you love because it makes you happy. Surround yourself around good people. Yep. Because you'll do great things. Uh huh. And take care of yourself so that you could do what it is you love for as long as you can. And don't walk up to dogs and put your face to their face. Don't do that. So that was a turning point in my life, and that was a turning point in your life. Never <laughs> never put your face to a, a random dog unless you are the dog's owner. Yes. So thanks for watching. Um, are thank you, gonna, you, Mike. Are you going to sign out? Yeah, I want to. All right, is sign it, out. Sorry, it's just... I'll intro, you sign out. I guess that's how it's going to be from here on out. Maybe that's the gimmick, right? That people sign out because yeah. it was a turning point it's in their life. It's a turning point. Yeah, Ha-ha, you turn get it, it, right? Yeah, so thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and share this on everything, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, make sure you follow both of us. Make sure to spread the positive message of the turning point in your life. Facts. Peace.